Hi, BC Calc. We have your day 79 notes here. Today, we're going to be talking about the calculus of log base B of U. So we know the derivative of ln x, but what about log of other bases? So we'll get into that in just a few moments. Before we do that, as we know, we like to do a quick warm up here. And I'm pretty confident you've got the first section, hopefully under wraps here. So go ahead and find these derivatives really quickly at the top with respect to x and then see if you can apply that to these three questions. So these, I think you can try before I see you next, but of course we'll go over them in class. Let's go to the next page, which I'll tell you essentially is more practice. So based on what we did at the end of the last lesson with exponential versus power, right? I mean, power we know is something of the form x to the n, whereas exponential is n to the x. If we can't really tell which one it is, we know we need logarithmic differentiation. So we're going to start with that for number one. And I'll actually walk through this page with you and, and see if you have any questions as we go through it. But if you wanted to pause right now and then kind of see where you're at with this, um, some of these derivatives, then you can go ahead and do that. But for the first example, let's find dy dx. So we're going to take the ln of both sides, ln y equals bring the sine x down, sine x, ln x. And then we could take the derivative of both sides. So one over y dy dx is equal to, on this side, we need some product rule. So the derivative of the first is cos x times the second ln x plus the derivative of the second is one over x times sine x. So we get sine x over x there. And then last but not least, when we multiply y to the other side, dy dx, is equal to y times this quantity where y is really x to the sine x power. So I'll replace that at this stage and we have a pretty quick derivative from there. x to the sine x times cos x ln x plus sine x over x. So the next part says find f prime of four both exactly and to three decimal place accuracy. So in order to do that, since we have our expression for the derivative, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So f prime of four, we'll do it exactly first, would be pi over four to some power, the sine of pi over four, sine of pi over four is radical two over two. And then on the inside, we would have multiplied by cosine of pi over four, cos pi over four is also radical two over two, times the natural log of pi over four. Plus over here, sine pi over four is again, radical two over two divided by X, which is pi over four. All right, and that is the very messy expression that represents the exact slope of the tangent line when X is equal to pi over four. And I guess I could try and clean this up a little bit. We have that kind of complex fraction thing going on at the end there. So if you multiply by four on the top and bottom, that would become two radical two over pi. Just know that that's the same thing here. Okay, so let's see if we type this in and see what we wind up getting here. So I just wanna check my mode. Yeah, I've been switching back and forth with modes. Let's go back to radian. Okay, so I'm gonna do pi over four to the radical two over two power. So maybe I'll even do a fancy fraction because I'm fancy like that, radical two over two. And then times radical two over two. All right, radical two over two ln of pi over four. Plus we decided the end is two radical two over pi if you simplify that. So two radical two. All right, I'm really hoping I didn't make any mistakes typing this in, but in the end I got 0.61495, and I'll, I'll find out in a second if I made any mistakes here, but this is 0 0.615 to three decimal places. So the exact would be stopping here, of course, and then the three decimal place accuracy would be 0 0.615. Now, I didn't need radian mode for what I just typed in, but if I wanna find the derivative of this function, at pi over four. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have to be in radian mode to do that. So let's go to n derived math eight, derivative with respect to x of x to the sine x power. And we're gonna do this at x equals pi over four and fingers crossed that we get 0.615. And wow, all right, pretty good, Mr. All. 
no little mistakes there. So 0.615 is the slope at pi over four. And then in the next part, I say, well, let's find the equation of the tangent line. That was just the slope I wanted, but the equation at uh, x equals pi over six. Here's what I'll allow us to do for this one. I won't make us find the exact value like we did up here, but we could do it if we wanted to. Let's do math eight while we have this on the calculator. So the derivative at pi over six, go back and just change this to a pi over six, is approximately 0.286 to three decimal places. And we need the point of tangency. So f of pi over six, if I plug it into the original function, would be pi over six to the sine of pi over six. Sine of pi over six in the numerator would be one half. So it's pi over six to the one half. If you wanna get fancy, of course, that's the square root of pi over six. So the equation of the tangent line would be y minus the square root of pi over six equals the slope 0 0.286 times x minus pi over six. All right, there we have it. So it's really all about our skills of finding derivatives with our new, not necessarily exponential, not necessarily power functions. But beyond that, bringing back some, some old stuff from the beginning of the year when we first learned about derivatives and tangent lines, bringing back some of that into the mix now that we have new derivatives we can find. And then this is gonna be also something, again, bringing us back to the beginning of the year, finding the minimum value of y equals x to the x exactly for when x is greater than zero. So to find the min value where this has a min, we're gonna go ahead and find the derivative. So if we take the natural log of both sides, the x is gonna come down. So we get ln y equals x times ln x. So we take the derivative of the left, done that a few times, product rule on the right. So the derivative of the first is one times ln x plus derivative of the second would be one over x. So one over x times x is just plus one here. And then multiplying y back to the other side, which is really x to the x, would give you the following derivative. Okay. The nice thing about the way the derivative is written is that it is in a factored form. So when we're finding min values, if we use the first derivative test, we're going to set that to zero. And we can separate our factors and say, when is x to the x equals zero? And when does ln x plus one equals zero? Well, it turns out that I'll never be able to raise something to a power. You know, let's think about this in terms of an exponential for a minute. I can't raise anything to a power and get an output of zero. So there's no so, um, real solutions over there that would make that true. But over here, if you subtract the one over, if ln x equals negative one, it turns out that x equals e to the negative first, which is equivalent to one over e, if you prefer things without negative exponents. So from there, what you would have to do is, of course, partition around one over E on the number line. You'd wanna make sure that you choose something very carefully between zero, right? We're only doing this for X greater than zero, between zero and one over E, and then something to the right to see if there's that sign change that we're looking for. And I'll tell you that we are going from decreasing to increasing around our critical point of one over E, which indicates that there is in fact um, in when we go from decreasing over to increasing. So make sure that you remember kind of the, some of those justifications that we used to write out back in the day. You know, I wouldn't just want to show the, the F prime number line and assume that that's good enough to justify on the AP. You know, we'd want to write a statement similar to what I've just described. But if this is where the min occurs, that's not necessarily the minimum value. So make sure we actually go back and answer the question. The minimum value is the function value at one over E. So if you plug in one over e to the original function, you get one over e to the one over e power. And that would be the exact value. So I guess that would be as far as we need to go. If you want the decimal approximation, it's approximately 0 0.692, okay? But this would be what the exact minimum value is that x to the x takes on. And you can graph that for x greater than zero and, and confirm that that is the min value. But of course, we have our first derivative test that can help confirm that algebraically here. Okay. All right, so that was, again, all kind of a little bit of review for us here in terms of these non-power slash non-exponential functions, finding some derivatives, bringing back some old stuff in the mix too. 
if you turn to the next page, now we're going to start getting into the new stuff, which is the calculus of log base A of U. All right. In order to consider what we know to be the derivative of log base A of U, we're going to start by taking a look at the function Y equals log X. And what we know about Y equals log X is if you were to convert this to exponential form, remember that this is really base 10 right now. In exponential form, you would have 10 to the Y equals X. And then from there, if you take the natural log of both sides, we know that that's kind of a trick that helps us in a lot of cases. If you bring the Y out front, Y times ln 10 would equal ln of X. And therefore, Y is equal to ln X over ln 10. So it turns out that log base 10 of X is equivalent to ln X over ln of the base of 10. And what this is known as is that this is known as the change of base rule. You would learn this for the first time in Algebra 2 honors and probably do a little bit more with it in pre-calc honors as well. So in general, if you have something of the form log base A of X, the change of base rule states that this is equivalent to taking log of X divided by log of the base A. And right now, when I'm applying that change of base rule in this format, we're talking about log base 10 in each of those cases. But it doesn't matter what you change the base to, you can change it to ln of x over ln of a, because we know natural log would be the same thing as log base e. Well, we like dealing with ln x best because if we're trying to find the derivative of something with log of a different base, we know what the derivative of ln x is. So we're gonna use this equivalency to find the derivative for log base a of x. So the derivative with respect to x, of if I separate this and just write it as one over ln a times ln x, right? We can kind of separate this as um, into the following product here. One over ln a, that's just a constant, right? Ln, natural log of the base, that's just a number. And the derivative of ln x is one over x. So this would become one over ln a times x when I find the derivative. So we've now sort of generalized the rule here that if you have log base anything of x, the derivative would be 1 over x times natural log of the base there. And if we have log base a of u, where u is a differentiable function of x, we would have 1 over u times ln a times the derivative of the inside u with respect to x. Okay. So let's put it to practice. We have these two examples right down here. You'll notice in number two, there's a little bit of a typo there. It says base A, but I changed it to base 10. So if you look at the derivative of log base eight of X squared plus five X, that's gonna be one over X squared plus five X times the natural log of the base eight. And then if this is u on the inside, the derivative of u with respect to x is 2x plus 5. Okay, so when all is said and done, it's up to you kind of how you want to write the denominator there. But we have 2x plus 5 in the numerator. If you want to pull the natural log of 8 to the outside as a constant in front of x squared plus 5x, of course, that would be fine as well. Okay. So the nice thing is, is that you have options, right? You can use that change of base rule. If you don't like, you know, kind of memorizing this, you just have to know that we can write this as natural log of x squared plus 5x over the natural log of 8. And then pull that ln of 8 out, right? It's 1 over ln 8 times the natural log of x squared plus 5x. This, I think, should be pretty confident differentiating, right? Take the derivative here, 1 over this quantity times the derivative of the inside. You're going to eventually get to that same um, end place. So it's up to you if you want to use that change of base rule to write it like this first, or if you want to kind of just um, go through the process now that we've generalized the rule. All right, in the last example, we have the derivative of log base 10 of 3x squared plus e to the x. So the derivative here would be 1 over 3x squared plus e to the x times the natural log of the base, which is 10, times the derivative of the inside here, which is 6x plus derivative of the e to the x is e to the x. So kind of cleaning things up here, we'll put that 6x plus e to the x up top. If you want to put the ln 10 out front on the bottom, again, that's it's kind of personal preference on your part. 
it would be ln 10 times 3x squared plus e to the x. Okay, so listen, if you can do those two, you can pretty much handle differentiating logs with any base that comes your way. So the last thing that we're gonna take a look at today is I'm just gonna have you start thinking about setting it up, but then next time we're together in class, we'll try this one. There's a worksheet for homework and it's this is number one on the worksheet from the day 79 homework that follows on the next page of the packet. And it says to find the volume generated by rotating the region bound by y equals e to the negative x squared and the, and the line x equals c and the coordinate axes around the y-axis. So we have a region bound by this curve, this vertical line, and the coordinate axes. We're gonna take that region, spin it around the y-axis, and then see what the resulting volume is, come up with an expression. So what I would do is make on your calculator quick sketches of e to the negative x squared, draw the line x equals c somewhere, you might kind of remember what this looks like because this is a, an equation that we've analyzed quite a bit. But if not, go ahead and sketch. Start thinking about what volume technique am I going to use when I rotate this around the y-axis? Is it going to be disc? Is it going to be washer? Is it going to be shell? Think about what volume technique works best, and then we'll, we'll go through the process of doing that very first question from the worksheet next time we are in class. So that is it for your lesson for day 79 today. If you have any questions about calculus of log bases or otherwise, we will answer that next time I see you. Have a great day.